Black power! Black power! Black power! Giving honor to the God of our ancestors. And I have been taught to begin every important event asking for the divine blessings and the grace of Almighty God. This important evening here at the forum and regular meeting of the family of the United African Movement under the bold and dynamic leadership of the warrior lawyer attorney Alton Maddox with Dr. Leonard Jeffries present, Dr. Steve Coakley present. I want to, before beginning, ask Mother in the rear and others of the MZA or the elders, may we proceed with this program. As Mother always say, teach or speak. But according to my heart and my spiritual tradition, I must begin in the name of Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever, for raising up in our midst a divine leader, a divine teacher, and a divine guide, in the person of the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah. I greet you with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Black power. Hotep. Shalafia ni. Shalom, shalom. Free the land. Up, you mighty nation, you can accomplish what you will. It is indeed my honor to be here with you tonight at the United African Movement Forum. As Attorney Maddox reminded me that traditionally, during this month of February, every year, the invitation has been an open invitation. This is my first opportunity to speak to the UAM family again, of which I am a member. In the year 2000, in the 21st century, there are many things on my heart tonight, and I must address all of them. Every day I have kept up with the trial of the four devils in the murder of brother Amadou Jallo, shot 41 times by these devils. The way it looks, It looks like the four devils could be, possibly, perhaps, acquitted. I saw the old devil. That's the problem that we are having in the 21st century. We still believe in white folks. White folks are actors. You can be sitting in front of your television tears running down your face and you know the cracker is acting on the screen. I saw the devil stand up in the courtroom and say this is a tragedy not a crime. I saw another beast come up and say officer so and so when he realized that this tragedy had happened he ran to him and he said, please don't die. 
please don't die because my ass might go to prison for life. Please don't die. Some of you were touched by the devil saying it's a tragedy. It's a terrible mistake. It's a tragedy and not a crime. I'm here tonight to tell you that it's a tragic crime. It's a tragedy and it's a crime and it's a tragic crime. Our brother struck 19 times they say for we know that these devils couldn't have been too good you missed close to 22 times we know they couldn't have been too well trained but I want to talk about this case brother Abner Lewima many of you say oh you know how silly we can be oh the police I'm sure I've seen some Negroes on TV say it oh I'm sure that the police didn't intend to kill him it doesn't reach the level of depraved indifference toward human life not depraved indifference toward life these are policemen Volpe was a policeman. The policeman who sodomized Brother Abner Lewima had a depraved indifference, not just against people, but against the black man. The New York Street Crimes Unit says we own the streets and we own the night. And they go on to wear their t-shirts and their sweatshirt with a black man on it saying, we go after the man. It's true, they do go after the man. You got to know who the man is. This is coded language. The man is you, black man. The white man is not the man. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad says that the white man is mankind. He's a kind of a man who resembles in measure the real man, the original man. So when they say we go after the man, they mean that they go after the black man. You haven't forgotten Mark Furman, have you? Mark Furman in the O.J. Simpson trial said the policeman is God. He went on to say that there are times when we beat niggers, we beat Mexicans or Chicanos, we beat them until they shit in their pants. We beat them until they puke on themselves. We throw them down the stairs. And if we see a nigger riding in a car with a white woman, we move on that nigger right away. You haven't forgotten these things, have you? Stop letting these Negroes come in front of you. And these Negro preachers telling you that they're good ones. It's just a few rotten apples in the barrel. All of the bastards are rotten. There's not one good, as the Bible says. No, not one. Not one. You say, oh, that's ridiculous. You can't get dropped in a pit of snakes and trying to figure out which one has the venom sack under his tongue this one is not poison and that one is not poison but now that one looks poison and the very one you think is not poison will be the one to strike you and take your life we're in the 21st century sister Tisha Miller is dead in California sitting in a car lying in a car asleep and four brute beasts take her life. Brother James Byrd in Texas, Jasper, Texas, dead because devils chained him behind their truck and dragged him until he was dismembered, leaving body parts all along the highway. Crackers are now all over the country, a rise in the Ku Klux Klan. 
a rise in the skinheads, a rise in the paramilitary right-wing organizations. Now they're just riding up on us, blowing us away in the streets at the bus stop. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that there would come a day when the white man would be stripped of all signs of civility and we would see a raw naked beast in the streets. This is a raw naked beast now. And they are backed up by a raw naked beast. Giuliani, Safer, and God damn it, Hillary Clinton ain't no better than no other cracker. <laughs> You Negroes should quit it. You Negroes should stop it. Hillary Clinton is one of the biggest whores in Washington, D.C. and one of the biggest liars in Washington, D.C. The only problem with Le, uh, Monica Lewinsky and Bill was that Bill was messing with a woman that she had her eyes on. But you caught these devils. Why are you courting the devil in the year 2000? So you can be a big nigga. I'm the nigga that all the white folks, <laughs> all the white folks have to come by me because I is a big nigga. No, you a little nigga and in the 21st century you shouldn't be a nigga at all. Stop playing games with the lives of our people just so you can poop in a seat in the Senate chamber or poop in a seat in the mayor's office or just poop anywhere. Just glad to be rubbed on the head by the peckerwood. This must stop. Negroes running around in the year 2000 talking about they had a near-death experience. That's what I said. And we got something for your behind in here tonight. I'm going to speak everything that is on my mind, and there better not be a damn person on the front row, the second row, the third row, who jumps up and holler, get out of my pocket. Get out of my pocket. And if you start one and down one of these goddamn aisles, we will bury you right here in the Obira Dempsey Auditorium. Keep your behind in your seat. In fact about it, you better not even say pocket. We're going to speak the truth. Regardless of whether you like that truth or not, we're in the 21st century. Our people are poor, hungry, ragged, naked, and out of doors. Our people are being murdered on a daily and consistent basis. And so you come saying you had a near-death experience. So you a changed man now. You want to work with all races, all colors. You want to see atonement. If you said anything against any nation, any group, any ethnic group, all races should now come together and pray for world peace. Pray for world peace with the devil. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that not only is the white man a devil, but what? He is the devil. You mean you wait till we get to the year 2000 to start sweethearting with the devil? The Holy Quran says Allah will give you a devil for a companion. And that devil will lead you step by step to the chastisement of the burning flame. In his great and illuminating book, Message to the Black Man in America, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that the white man was the devil yesterday, he's the devil today, and he'll be the devil tomorrow. That his nature won't allow him to be anything but the devil. The white man hasn't changed, you've changed. Well, it might be a strategy. You mean you will lie to our people? 
for some cheap strategy you will tell our people that the white man is your friend that he's your brother just for some cheap strategy many of our people across the country are almost to lose their minds hearing such wickedness coming from your mouth the most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us for 44 long years that separation is the best and only solution the best and only solution Tisha Miller Brother Bird, Brother Amadou, Brother Louima, the countless others, shot 22 times, William Gavin, Jerry Lee Amy, shot 39 times, Eleanor Bumpers, shot Jerry Lee Amy, he's over six feet tall. The coroner's report, we have the pictures, bullet holes all on his shoulder. What does that mean? Doesn't mean that the cracker got on a step ladder and shot down. It means like Brother Amadou Jallo, they shot him while he was standing, shot him as he was falling, and kept shooting him even after he was on the ground because they were getting rid of a nigger. And you want to integrate with this beast. All of the speakers who have come all of the books that's out there all of the great teachers who have come to us and you are like the scripture says the dog returns to his own vomit the sow once clean returns to the mud like a dog turning to his own returning to his own vomit God Almighty has blessed us to heave up a lot of the filth the indecency and the foolishness of wanting to integrate with the white man. And now you turn and lick up that which you have been blessed to heave up. And like a sow clean, you now go back to the mud to wallow in the mud. In the name of universal brotherhood. Understand they're bringing Wallace Muhammad to this year's Savior's Day. One of the biggest hypocrites ever to come up among black people in the history of the black nation. If you're with Wallace Muhammad and you don't like what I'm saying, it's best for you to get up and tip on out. We're not going to allow you to stand up and inter interrupt this meeting. We will remove you from the meeting. So if this bothers you, just get up and leave because we're going to speak the truth here. <laughs> Wallace Muhammad destroyed the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He said when he spoke in Atlanta, Georgia that if America is attacked by a Muslim nation or an African nation that he would fight on the side of America. I'm not lying on him. They even printed the transcript in some back issue of the AM Journal. He went on to say that I'm not going to leave and go against my government, meaning America, for some foreign government, meaning Africa. This is a sick Negro. He brought in the American flag. Had 4th of July parades, floats dedicated to the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Wrongs, I mean the Bill of Rights. Let the devil write in the holy house of Muhammad. The Bible speaks of the desecration and the standing, the desecration stand and the abomination brain computer kicked it out the desecration and the abomination standing in the holy place huh? another scripture speaks of damnable heresies 
that crept in among the righteous. And you Muslims, blind, deaf, and dumb, you know what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught. You know he did not teach you to integrate with the devil. And he knew, you know that he never told you to make the devil your friend and claim that you love the devil. We want freedom and independence. Not just no justice, no peace. Come on. Is that all we want? Is just a white man to treat us better? If you would shoot us 31 times. It'd be a little better, boss. Uh, 21 times, I wouldn't be so mad. But 41 times is an outrage. 11 times, boss. One time is too much. No justice, no peace. I'm not trying to diss you. I love you, and I have said it with you. And there are many among you, especially under the leadership of your chairman, that don't just say no justice, no peace, but you are for black nationalism. You are for pan-African nationalism, revolutionary nationalism. That makes a difference. The white man will never treat you right. After you bury one, you'll end up burying another one and another one and another one. Somewhere a generation must be born that answers the white man. You shoot one black man 41 times, there must be a generation that shoots 41 crackers one time, center mass in the center of the head. You don't want to hear that kind of talk. You want to pick it. Right. You want to boycott. Right. You want to sing and chant and march in the snow and in the ice. Right. The cracker already knew you were coming in the snow and the ice. He moved it from the Bronx. I don't give a damn how you turn your face up at me and how you move your eyes against me because you're the white man's nigger if you continue to try to hold on to this no good devil. I didn't come for an oratorical contest. I didn't come to say what you like. Somebody has to say something different to you. We can't do the same thing over and over and over and over and over goddamn again. When do you stand up? When? Four white cops in 81 seconds beat Rodney King 56 times in 81 seconds we watched it on video and an amateur uh, person cameraman filmed it we watched it every day is that true we didn't have to ask how light it was it we didn't have to ask was it to the left or to the right or did he turn this way did he turn that way we didn't have to ask how many times did they do this we watched it on video did we did the jury watch it on video huh they got life in prison right they got 25 years right 15 years, right? The state of California acquitted them. Four white policemen in California with Rodney King were acquitted. Coon, Powell, Brasino, and the boys. Then a cracker gets beat damn near to death. Reginald Denny. What story did the white folks use in California. How does it differ from the story in the Bronx? These four bastards say that they shot Brother Amadou Diallo 41 times because they were afraid. We were afraid 
You don't know how afraid the policemen are. We were afraid for our lives. He had a wallet in his hand. We thought it was a gun, they say. We don't even know if he had the wallet in his hand. The bastards probably took the wallet out of the brother's pocket and laid the wallet wherever they wanted it to be laid. Mark Furman, don't forget him. Mark Furman told you that the policemen always lie and change the circumstances. Huh? They change the report in their favor. Someone says outside the window, they heard them say, oh, shh. This is what we're going to have to say. This is what we're going to say. Some Negro gets on the stand. I believe it was today. Negro woman. Was she a Negro woman? Is that true? And say she heard him say, gun. Was that a black woman? How many saw it? Was it a black woman? I didn't see it. I'm hearing the report. That's what's wrong with you. On the streets, they say, it's only a fool that attempts to play by the golden rule in a crowd that won't play fair. It's only a fool that attempts to play by the golden rule in a crowd that won't play fair. You don't have any business going all the way up to Albany. Some I heard them say gun. Suppose they were saying gum, fool. You heard him say gun. Just the white man's nigger in the year 2000. They said they feared for their lives. They ultimately found a wallet, a beeper, and some keys. But they feared for their lives. What about the black men across the country killed by their white so-called friends? out partying with them, out drinking with them. And then when the party is over, when the drinking is over, they turn around and kill what they call the nigger. What about Jeffrey Dahmer working at a chocolate factory in the daytime eating what he called niggers at nighttime? Nigger nuggets at nighttime. <laughs> The white man has laws to protect birds. Is that right? He has laws to protect other types of animals. He has laws to protect fish. If he hits a dog, many times he's sorry that he killed a dog. But he'll shoot a black man or a black woman or a black child and don't feel nothing. Four black men beat the hell out of Reginald Denny. Bust him in the head with a brick. I was happy. You had just beat up Brother Rodney King. Four white cops over the black man. So God put four black men over a white man. Came through in that big truck. Sticking his finger out the window. Because the four white cops had just got off had just been acquitted, found not guilty. Black people weren't mean. The black people weren't racist. The black people feared for their lives. Cracker come through there in a big old damn truck, riding down the street, right through the black neighborhood, honking his horn and doing the finger out the window. They say they thought Rodney King was on PCP. Black people in the black community, when Reginald Denny came through the white boy, they thought he was on that PCP. They thought this crack has got to be crazy. Coming through here doing this. So it says they took him from the truck. They showed on some video them hit him in the head with a brick or something. They say Rodney King, they kept beating him 
56 times in 81 seconds because he wouldn't lie down. And they were afraid. He kept getting up and they thought he was on that PCP. The brothers didn't just viciously beat the white boy Reginald Denny. He wouldn't lay down. He kept getting up. And they thought he was on that PCP. So they only tapped him a little bit with that big brick to subdue him so they could turn him over to the proper authorities. You say, but that's not fair. What about the black man? I'm not for holding up for black evil nor white evil. What about the black man that ran from the sidewalk and was seen going through his pockets and took his wallet from his pocket and then ran with his wallet? You can't tell me, Khalid Muhammad, that you condone that. Of course I condone it. Because I know what happened. You want to know what happened? The brother ran over from the sidewalk, went in his pocket. It wasn't robbing him. He got his wallet to see what kind of identification he had so that he could make a positive ID. And he looked in his wallet, saw what he had in his wallet. He said, oh, this is Mr. Reginald Denny. You say, but why did he run off with the man's wallet? He ran off with the man's wallet looking for the nearest pay telephone so that he could call the authorities and tell them, Mr. Reginald Denny, a white man, is here in the black community. He's on that dangerous PCP. We have had to subdue him here and hold him down in the streets until someone could get here. Look at me like that. I don't give a damn about you looking at me like that. You will never stop the white man from killing you until you start killing some white folks. You will never stop the white man from beating you until you start beating some white folks. Killing them in self-defense. Beating them in self-defense. 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 Oh, I know what to say, cracker. Raise up off of me. I know what to say. I knew what I was saying at the Million Youth March. Wait, some of you Toms got mad with me. Self-defense. Caskets must roll in the white community. As they roll in our community, you must learn to empty your clip in self-defense, black man, right. on somebody other than another black man or a black woman. Right. I'm talking about fighting, killing, bleeding, and dying for freedom. Malcolm said the price of freedom is death. Right. There is no freedom singing, no, doing poetry, Getting the flu? No, <laughs> Getting arrested by appointment? No, Baby, make sure you have dinner ready. I shouldn't be at, over there at the jail, but a little while you have dinner ready, I'll be on home. The white man laughs at you. Before he does it, he says, look, this is what the niggas gonna do. They gonna do this, they gonna do this, they're going to do this, and they're going to do that, because that's what they always do. Do I have to protect my wife at home? I'm one of the four cops that shot Brother Amadou Diallo 41 times. Do I have to protect my wife at home? Am I afraid that somebody's going to catch her at the supermarket and kill her and my little blue-eyed baby? No. I ain't got to worry about that. Black people ain't going to kill nobody but each other. That's what the white man says. Black people ain't going to fight nobody but each other. And then these Negroes, afraid to even be with me, scared to goddamn death to be with me. And if you're with me, you're buck dancing all the damn time. Everything you have heard that the white man said against me or charged me with, you got your fat behind out there buck dancing. 
I'm here. Eyes is here. But I'm, I'm not against whites. I'm here. But I ain't against gays. I'm here. But I ain't against Jews. I'm here. I ain't against nobody. That's pitiful in the year 2000. That's, right. That's absolutely pitiful. That's right. It's pitiful. Sure. What about freedom and independence? Hey. Have you considered freedom and independence? Have you considered a nation of your own? You say that's hard. The white man is not going to just give us a nation. He ain't going to give you no justice either. Volpe going to prison is not justice. The devils who killed James Byrd in Jasper, Texas. That's not justice. Justice is an eye for an eye and a that's tooth right. for a tooth and a limb for a limb and a life for a life. That's, right. that's justice. Look at this beast in Las Vegas. Our little baby, seven years old. Little sister Sharice, little baby at the arcade there. She goes in, the beast goes in behind her and molests her and then kills our little seven-year-old baby. It's not justice for him to go to prison. Don't tell me about these devils. What's the woman's name? Leslie Abramson. No good devil. She was his attorney. She couldn't get him off completely, but she kept him from giving him the death penalty. I heard her say yesterday, that I really like this young man. I really care about him. How could you really like him? I'm talking to you now. How could Leslie Abramson like him after he did what he did to our little seven-year-old baby? And don't tell me nothing about the prosecutor, Eric Warner or whatever his name is, in Albany. Huh? That's right. He's just going through the motion. First, in his opening statement, the cracker says, I don't believe that these four black policemen left home with... Huh? I'm sorry. I don't believe. I'm sorry. I don't believe we don't have any black ones like that. We need some like that. I don't believe, he said, that these four white policemen, these four white policemen, left home with the intent to kill Mr. Giallo. Only way they didn't leave home with the intent to kill Amadou Giallo is they didn't know him. But any nigga will do. They have inner circles, clans. The clan no longer wears white robes and white sheets and pillowcases and all that madness. You can wear a blue uniform and kill a nigga and it's justifiable homicide. You can outright murder a black man or woman or child and it's justifiable homicide. Black man, we must stand up. We must stand up. Many black women are wondering when we are going to stand up. This Barnum and Bailey circus has to end. Where are we playing these games? I'm back to the games. Playing games. To be seen. To be liked. All kind of devils now crawling out of the woodwork backing you up now. This devil coming. That devil coming. Let me tell you. If you are really for the liberation of your people, devils ain't going to come out of the woodwork backing you up. I don't give a damn what you say. These cold-blooded beasts are not going to come out to back you up. In fact, they're not going to even cover what you do. The only reason the beasts cover the Million Youth March is because it's a strategy to kill the attendants, kill the crowd, 
vilify the leader of the march and frighten the hell out of you to keep you from coming. As soon as the march is over, I could stand butt naked on the city hall steps with a picture of Giuliani in my hand and safer in the other hand. And you probably wouldn't see no camera coverage or newspaper coverage. The white man chooses who he wants to cover. Some Negroes are more acceptable than other Negroes. You don't help a black revolutionary promote a black power, black revolutionary movement. The white man ain't crazy. You give the people a softer alternative and you make them think that's what you should be doing. You say, well, we can't just do nothing. I don't say stop doing some of the things that you're doing, but you must be doing something else other than that. Didn't you do it for everybody that I named and some of the others who were murdered that I didn't name? Did you get any better results? Come on, brothers and sisters. The time is now for us to stand up on the legacy of the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, to stand up on the legacy of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to stand up on the legacy of Old Testament Malcolm, not New Testament Malcolm, Old Testament Farrakhan, not New Testament Farrakhan. I'm not afraid to teach it. You've shot me down like a dog before. But I didn't die. That's right. That's right. I intend to stand for the liberation of my people. If you want to take my life, you got to bring a life this time in order to take a life this time. They got specific instructions everywhere we go. If that breaks out anywhere we go, that you are not to leave the room alive. Whoever it is must die. You must not go to court. You must not go to jail. You must die for trying to silence the voice of black power, black nationalism, and revolutionary pan-Africanism. We must put that back on the agenda. Integration is taking over. I hear the Million Family March now is going to be for all races, all colors, and they're going to have a, a mass marriage, interracial marriage. Anybody that's out there, if you're in the crowd, if you get married, hell, you're going to get married. Sisters going to get married to devil men. Huh? But I mean, it shouldn't be under the voice of a conscious and righteous occasion. Say they're doing that now. Brothers will get married to white women. Whoever is in the crowd gets married. And not only will sisters get married to white men, but some sisters will get married to white women. And some brothers will get married to white men. But I say sisters with white women, brothers with white men, whoever is getting married gets married. Then an integrated homosexual couple will go out saying, I got married at the Million Family March. What happened to the voice of Elijah Muhammad? What happened to Elijah? Elijah taught you black man and black woman that the very elect of God would be deceived. That the dragon would sweep up a third of the stars of heaven with his tail. And that the very elect, I repeat, of God would be deceived. Oh, brother, my brother, my brother, and my sister, cannot you see that in New York we should be the example for the world? A mass movement, black power movement should be formed in New York here in the year 2000. Poor 
blessed Sister Kariatu, Sister Kariatu Jalo. I looked at her and cried, not just because of the loss of her son, but I looked at that blessed beloved mother and I almost cried because, and on another occasion, the, occasion the tears did come because I heard her say how much she believes in the justice system of white America and how Brother Amadou dreamed of America and had hopes in America. He loved America. The white man is the devil, brothers and sisters. That's not rhetoric. That's 100% right and exact. He is the devil. He cannot change. And he can only deceive you and take you down with him. Come on, brothers and sisters. This book, if you are Christian, this book, and I got a white one. <laughs> this book warns you that Satan, the devil, like a roving lion, goes to and fro, to and fro, seeking whom he can devour. It talks about the deception of the serpent, of the snake. All of this is talking about him. It talks about a people blessed that are certainly black, but the scripture talks of them under a hidden symbolism that they are deaf, dumb, and blind, robbed of a knowledge of self, hard to lead in the right direction and easy to lead in the wrong direction. The prophecies are being fulfilled right before your eyes, brothers and sisters. And you won't stand up. And the babies that you have produced, black woman and black man, are just as dead as you are. And certainly, maybe not any of you who are here. Maybe that's the ones who didn't come. None of you here, maybe. But look at the generation. Rappers who could raise the youth up overnight. If you can make them turn their caps around backwards. If you can make them wear their pants down to here, then it shows the crack of their private parts. If you can make them look sloppy. If you can make them talk filthy and low down and degenerate. If you can make them disrespectors of the black woman. If you can make them talk about the murder and the killing of another black man or another black woman. And by the same token, you can make them respectable and decent and upright. Listen to your lyrics. You tell me, die, nigga, die, nigga, die, nigga, die. How come you can't say a white woman, the real bitch or bitch in your music? Because you scared of the white man. And the rest of you. I ain't running no rappers out, am I? I don't want the rappers to run from the truth. I want them to run to the truth. Brother Divine, our brother didn't come, did he? Okay. But I want to handle him a certain way, but I want to teach the truth when he's here. We were expecting a couple of brothers here tonight, a couple of rappers and sisters, brothers, whatever, whatever, whatever. Everybody, you go to church, the preacher is a mealy mouth, milk toast fella. You don't teach that Jesus was a revolutionary. You don't teach that Jesus was a black revolutionary. You don't teach that Jesus is coming back with ten thousands of the saints of the Most High to make war with the beast. But it's in your Bible. But you don't teach it. You don't teach that America is the modern Babylon and that Babylon is fallen, is fallen. She has become the habitation of devils, the whole of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. The preacher has fallen down on his duty. The rapper has fallen down on his duty and her duty. 
The teacher is afraid. Sister shouldn't have to worry in her classroom that she's bringing someone to the classroom. That's what the classroom is for. The classroom is for being exposed to different ideas, different philosophies, and different doctrines, and exploring them, studying them, and then coming to, after careful, critical analysis, coming to some reasonable and intelligent decision. But you must be exposed to those doctrines, those philosophies. The teachers, many have fallen down. Principals are scared to death. Don't be a chancellor or president of a university and you're a Negro. Black schools, they used to have a t-shirt say the, the, um, the black of the college, the sweet of the knowledge. No, not true. <laughs> Most black students have to fight with their black president and the black faculty of Negro institutions just to have black studies on campus. I'm talking about where we are in the year 2000. We got to get away from this. Church full of white Jesus. White angels. White disciples. A white doctrine and a white theology. Come on now. A white doctrine and a white theology. You go to the mosque or the masjid. You got a white theology. Huh? You don't want nothing to do with Elijah Muhammad. Some of you who are Sunni. Elijah Muhammad was no Muslim. Elijah Muhammad taught all that black stuff. The stuff for Allah, the stuff for Allah. I'm with the white prophet Muhammad. He taught universal brotherhood. Well, you can't find it nowhere in the world. Ain't no universal brotherhood. Everybody has their foot on the neck of the black man and the black woman. Everywhere all over the world. In Muslim country, in Christian country, it makes no difference. Socialists, capitalists, all of them. I try to drive these points into your heart, into your head. And so you put people out there and leave them out there. And you are cheerleaders behind the scene. I run into so many people on the street. They all want to hug me. They all want to kiss me. And they all, all, many of them, not UAM's members, not UAM, but some of the others, they see me and they're running while they speak to me. Right. Brother, good to see you, brother. <laughs> good to see you, brother. You keep up the good work now. You keep up the good work. I say, brother, I need your help. Sister, I need your help. You got me? You got me? This is the year 2000, we think. <laughs> this is the 21st century, we guess. You got to stop being cheerleaders. You got to be sincere. You're complaining over the crackers taking over Harlem. We could unite could have kept the cracker out. That's right. That's right. Oh yes, we could have. Yes, you let the vendors be run off of 125th Street. That's right. Now the devil is putting up shopping malls. Navy. Starbucks. Huh? Pathmark. This kind of devil, that kind of devil. Mac Devils. Wrong aid. Come on. We've had too many teachers in New York. Uncompromising teachers. Carlos Cook. By Black. 
They boycotted 125th Street. You pass right by the boycott. Insult the vendors and walk out right in and buy from the cracker. Calvin Butts, somebody said, brought his name. Another one of them Negro preachers. I know some of you go to Abyssinian, but I wouldn't tell nobody. As I've said before, you know you can't trust a nigga named Butts. You know you can't trust a nigga named Butts. My name was Butts. I would have changed my name a long time ago. And you're the pastor of Abyssinian? Why not have an African name? Huh? You still good fellow Willie nigga in the year 2000. Why am I on Calvin Butts? Because he's always buck dancing and selling out and double crossing. He brought Farrah Khan in for the Million Youth March, had him at the church. Then the next few weeks, he was criticizing Farrah Khan because the white folks must have got on the nigga. He called Giuliani a racist, and all of you act like that was great. He called him a racist. So what? Then he turned around and apologized and hugged the beast. These buck dancing niggas, these niggas, plantation niggas, call him a racist, wasn't even, which wasn't really too bad. You could have let that stand. Wasn't too bad. Call him a racist and then turn around and hug him. And the old devil packed the nigga on the head. Say, you a good nigga. You my nigga, Calvin. Now you going on back to Abyssinian, boy. And I don't want no more trouble out of you, Calvin. No, sir. But can I get a little bit more on my stove? I want to set up a little housing, boss. Can I get a little something for that? You behave yourself, Calvin. Oh, Floyd Flake, all them niggas. Don't the whole Congressional Black Caucus when they brought up Sister Asada Shakur being uh, extradited back here from Cuba. These Negroes, Brother Baba Tunde and Sister Naya Arende and Brother Herman Ferguson with Nation Time and Sister Viola Plummer and Brother Omar Wale and others with the December 12th movement. They exposed them Negroes in the Congressional Black Caucus who voted against Asada, Asada or didn't vote at all. Even had a Negro that used to be a panther. That's right. Negro named Bobby Rush. Congressman Bobby Rush in the same city, Chicago, where Fred Hampton and Mark Clark was. Right. Murdered by this beast. That's right. And Bobby Rush didn't even vote for Asada Shakur. Right. Come on, brothers and sisters. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. But we are deaf, dumb, and blind. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said we should accept nothing less than a nation of our own and some of this land and some of this good earth that we can call our own. Free to land, he says. Free to land. Some of you don't even want to think of having a nation of your own anymore. Death row full of us. Penitentiaries full of us. Mumir. Shaka Sankofa. Huh? Fred Hampton Jr. Not, on, not all. There are others. Spread throughout the jails and prisons. Sundiata. Mutulu. Sekou. Eddie Conway. Rochelle McGee, I'm come saving him for last. Rochelle McGee, I'm running all over the country. I'm saving him for last. That's right here and that's personal. Because I got to answer a few of you silly ones in the audience, so I got to bring up Patrice Peterson. All over the country, our political prisoners are there, locked down, some on death row. And now we get to the Million Youth March. 
and Patrice Peterson. Some of you silly Negroes, some of you who are here, silly Negroes running around and some of you standing up scared to talk about me openly. Some were bold enough to call my name. Others, well, these nigger preachers, will beat around the bush. Some of the, there's some people who ought to be involved that ain't involved. We involved and we doing this and we doing that. But some of the ones who really ought to be involved ain't involved. You don't know the story. Do you want to know the story? When Patrice Peterson, who is very definitely a political prisoner, when Patrice Peterson, who is very definitely one who showed great courage in standing up against those beasts at the Million Youth March on Malcolm X Boulevard in 1998, when Patrice Peterson was first arrested, I had never met him before, didn't know him from nobody but loved him for standing up and fighting those crackers even with a chair. Right. So never having met him before, I got a preacher at one of the churches, pulled together some of our people, Ray put up the first thousand dollars myself, and raised nine more thousand dollars in that one night, one night, same night, ten thousand dollars. Went and visited him in jail, then took the cash money because I didn't want no hang-ups. I know how to do it, having been the supreme captain of the Fruit of Islam, captain, lieutenant, squad leader, section leader. I went there with the cash money so the devil couldn't say, well, we can't accept this kind of check and we, we can't do this and do you have that? Cash. Went in and counted out $10,000. Cash. Waited for him no matter how long it took, how many hours waited for him myself so that I could walk him out of that door myself walked him out of the door then took him to him and his lady to dinner and then we started planning different strategies then went and got three lawyers free for one Patrice Peterson three lawyers one had to shut down his practice in DC but under me talking to him and him having confidence in me, shut it down and came here to represent Patrice Peterson. The other one was attorney Tanya McClary, lawyer for the NAACP at the time. We got her, Anthony Mack, we got him. Three lawyers for one Patrice Peterson. No money. I was in the courtroom every day for you niggas who are now asking, well, where is he now? I'm going to tell you why I'm not there now. Where is he now? I went every day. Those of you who were there, you know I was there every day. And when it was over, we then went and took out, we didn't have a lot of money, took out our little nickels and dimes and got food and broke it off and shared it with each other and ate every day. Me and the three lawyers tried to get Patrice Peterson to come with us every day to work on his own case. Right. He never had time. Sometimes we stayed up until 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning right. working on his case. I don't mean sometime, I mean every day was a late day because we were up working on the case every evening, every night. One of the lawyers lived way in New Jersey. Another one lived, as I said, in D.C. Another one lived somewhere else, holding them together staying on them, sitting directly in front of the witness. Some people say that every witness that got up there that I would write a little card and tell them what to say. They ask them a question, I'd write, no. That's what they say I did. They say I would write, yes. What time? So and so, I, they say I would write the time and hold it up. Prosecutor got mad. We had a hung jury. We had a hung jury on that one. When we came out of there, I didn't hear from Patrice Peterson for a year. Never got a phone call. If my relatives would have got me out, I would have called him and said thank you. If one of my friends would have got me out, I would have called him and said thank you. 
So certainly if somebody who don't even know me raised ten thousand dollars and get me out and visit me in jail and then go to court for me every day, then pull three lawyers together, then stay up with them half of the damn night in my behalf and I never have time, I would at least call them one time. But you ain't even got to the good part yet. I don't believe he deserves, I know he doesn't deserve to be locked up. But this is a criminal, criminal justice system. He does not deserve to be there. So I heard that Judge George Daniels, the black judge, was a personal friend of former mayor David Dinkins. And that he knew Al Sharpton and may know Attorney Maddox. So then, Brother Patrice had been found guilty by the jury, predominantly white. So I said, before sentencing, maybe we can still save him. So I called one of our chairwomen. She's on another assignment up in Albany now, Sister Gigi. We got on the phone, and another sister who was in here a minute ago, and somebody else. I said, look, we need to get to Reverend Al Sharpton, we need to get to David Dinkins. If they know this judge, before he sentences Brother Patrice, maybe they can speak to him, not to break white law or nothing, but maybe they can speak to him and he'll get community service or something, or just a short, short time or something. I say, but I think it's wise, now listen to me, so you'll know that your foolishness ain't nothing but foolishness, and that you're not a wise strategist. I said, Dickens ain't gonna do nothing with me, and Sharpton is scared of me, to be around me in front of too many white folks. As I said, without buck dancing or denying, and, I never done Sharpton like that. Never. I never say, I, I can stand with Reverend Sharpton. I never say that and then make apologies. I can stand with him, but I'm, I'm not for wearing wires. I'm not for being an undercover police. I'm not for being a snitch. I never say that because I can't prove that. And that's my brother. And if he did that, I believe that he's done enough good to exonerate him from that so I support him where I can but it would be wrong for me to stand with him every time I'm on a program and because I know that it is sad that he did all of those things for me to always say I'm with Reverend Sharpton but I don't wear no wire I'm with Reverend Sharpton but I ain't never worked with the police I'm with Reverend Sharpton but I ain't never been undercover I'm with I don't do that so don't stand up and say I'm with Khaled but I'm not against whites. That's right. I'm not against gays. That's right. I'm not against. God damn it, if you got to do all of that, sit your ass down and don't come up on the goddamn stage. <laughs> don't even stand with me. If you got to buck dance every goddamn time That's you stand. Right. A phony ass friendship. That's right. oh. Never been invited to the house of justice. I'll be back to Patrice Peterson in a minute because some of this took place at the house of justice last night. That's right. Oh, no good behind Hillary Clinton, House of Justice. Bill Bradley, House of Justice. Ask him if he was for reparations, and if Cracker stood right up and looked everybody in their eye, didn't miss a beat, didn't hesitate, say, I will not support a reparations bill. Should have run that bastard out of there right then. You couldn't have gone in no so-called imposter Jews synagogue you couldn't have gone in one of their B'nai B'rith buildings. You couldn't have gone in what they call their Anti-Defamation League building and stood up there and told them that you are not for a major plank of the Jewish cause. When I say Jewish, I mean they're not the Jews, they're Jewish. They wish they were the Jews. You didn't run that cracker out of there. Some of the Panthers, that's the night that Bill Perkins did all that crazy stuff. That's right. Bradley came out and the youth bum rushed him to ask him questions. The cracker ran to his limousine right. or his car and got away. 
all these Negroes have been invited there. Old uh, Benjamin Chavis. Negro who went to the ADL when the president, the vice president, the senate, the congress, the pope, and everybody was on me for King College. He called him. It's in the books written on Minister Farrakhan's life and other documentation. He calls Abraham Foxman of the ADL and tells him that he he, he thanks him for putting a full page ad in the Sunday New York Times against me. Benjamin Chavis then told him we didn't realize it was that serious. Thank you for opening our eyes. In fact I'm speaking tonight at the Smithsonian Institute I'm sending you a copy of my speech right now condemning Khalid Muhammad and it gives you a text of Chavis' speech that he delivered at the Smithsonian Institute saying that I was the most violent and vile racist and anti-Semite uh, it was a slap in the face to Malcolm and Martin Luther King and Viola Luizo and Swerner and Cheney and Goodman so Ben Chavis has been there every boot licking Negro every cracker you can imagine has been to the house of justice only time I've ever been to the House of Justice is when I go on my own, when I used to go on my own, to sit down and talk. A friendship is two ways. I mean, I'm not no mistress. I'm not your girlfriend. I'm 100% black man. Black God. You my friend if ain't nobody around. Uh, close that door. Don't let nobody see us. So it was there that they say last night a lot of this was going on. So I said, look. I said, if Dinkins is going to help, bro, I want Brother Patrice free on the ground out of that devil's dungeon, out of his clutches. I ain't got no ego involved in that. I said, it's best for me to hide in the background. Sister Gigi, call Reverend Sharpton. Sister Gigi, see if Reverend Sharpton will give you the number to David Dinkins or if he'll talk to Dinkins for you. And go and talk to Attorney Maddox and see if he'll talk to Dinkins for you. And if they will talk to the judge and see if the judge will cut brother some slack. But I say, I know Sharpton ain't going to work beside me. So I need to stay out of the way so it'll be easy for them to work. I said, I know Dinkins won't do it. It'll be easier for them to work if I'm out of the way. I know the judge ain't going to do nothing because he's a nigga also. And I know he ain't going to do nothing. So I'll stay out of the way. So maybe these Negroes plus Attorney Maddox. I didn't say he was a Negro. That's the Negroes in one category and Attorney Maddox in a totally different category. And that ain't, hey, 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 and that ain't because I'm here. I have come here where I had heard things come out of here and dealt with them straight from your podium and your rostrum. But Alton Maddox does not go in the category with Sharpton and Dinkins by no stretch of the imagination. If No, I'm letting you know that I ain't buck dancing for you. If I felt he did, God damn it, I'd stand right in your face That's and right. tell you and collect the money you're paying me after it's over. That's and if you wanted to keep it, I'd tell you, keep your goddamn money. <laughs> now, so that's why you haven't seen a man who was there every day the last time and walk in the streets blocks and blocks to get, find some place where we could sit down because they at the NAACP office was trying to put us out. They didn't want Tanya bringing us in there working on Patrice's case. We'd have to sneak in there sometime. We had to try to find another place sometime. This was every day we did, did this. So that's why you haven't seen me. Give me the benefit of the doubt. That's right. Don't run your mouth on me. Then running around making people think you bad. I'm going to tell him tomorrow night. College should be here. He's the one that's over the march. Why ain't he here for Patrice? I'm there for him by being absent this time. That's how I'm there. We say, well, ain't he a panther? 
Brother Patrice Peterson is not a member of the new Black Panther Party for self-defense. He said he wanted to be a member and he never showed up. And when he did show up, these brothers were all, and sisters, these sisters and brothers were working, building chapters all over. And he got angry and took his patch and ripped it off his uniform. How many in this room know that our Panthers know I'm telling the truth? Put your fist in the air if you know I'm telling the truth. If you're on the stage here. Ripped his patch off of his uniform. Well, we don't care about that. We're trying to get him free. But don't you talk something you don't know. He's welcome to be a Panther. He needs some discipline in his life. And he seems to love me and respect me and look up to me. I'm one of the few people that can halfway kind of reason with him. And I love him. But I ain't for no foolishness. So if you rip your patch off your uniform in front of the members, just rip it from your, you can't do that in the white man's army. You know you can't do that in the white man's army. So all of this is what you didn't know. We must build our own banks, schools, restaurants, factories, industry, textile mills. We must form an African United Front and we must arm ourselves for self-defense. We must do what? Arm ourselves for self-defense. For self-defense. I'm not talking about going out just killing white folks indiscriminately. I'm talking about defending ourselves. We must arm ourselves for self-defense and learn how to handle those weapons. Those are the few things that I wanted to share with you here tonight. These young brothers and sisters who, uh, some of them who are here with us tonight with the new Black Panther Party for self-defense, let's give them a strong black hand. I'm closing out now. They come to help. They come to help wherever they go. And if you accept them, if they make the decision, the different chairmen and chairwomen of the different chapters that they are coming to your event, they come simply to help. And if you welcome them and they've made the decision to be there, they will help you. If you don't want them there, just let them know. That's right. And they will leave. We won't get angry with you or anything. And we have some members that go between the party, Panther Party and other organizations. We don't stop them from doing that. We let you make up your mind naturally the way you want to. I thank Brother Alton Maddox and my family here at the United African Movement. I guess I've hit on just about everybody that I thought needed to be hit on. Huh? Oh, Jesse Jackson, he's just, ain't nothing, Jesse Jackson, ain't nothing to say about Jesse. Mm -hmm. Nothing to say. Huh? Yeah, they ready for me to go. So brothers and sisters, I wanted to take at least one or two questions, so I'll stop at this point as I thank you for being as attentive as you have been. Black power! 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 Is there one question or two? If not, we'll close it out right here. We don't have time. We don't have time. Oh, yes, ma'am. Shh. Who are you? I think everybody that was out last night know that I spoke up for Brother Peterson last night and I called my brother's name right here. Uh, I spoke to the sister that you said you went out to dinner with tonight. I spoke with her tonight. But I don't want to have um, Peter, uh, Peterson's uh, wife, the one that you... Did you No, you said you went out with her when you uh, came up out of the jail with him, right? But anyway, I don't want to have a public fight with you. 
I may be uninformed, but we got to talk. We got to dialogue because I, I, I know I'm on the same page with you. You know, I know that it ain't no different than me and you. And I don't come out here to fight with you just to basically deal with the issues. Because, you know, you spoke about him taking off his patch and stuff. I know that 98% of the people that was at the men, uh, Youth March was not Black Panthers. I know you said no because you said because he threw off his patch and because he ripped off his patch and everything. But basically, what my concerns is about the pill. The bottom line is is that the brother's in jail right now, and technically speaking, he's facing three years. I understand that he does not have an attorney. I understand that it costs thousands and thousands of dollars to deal with this appeal. I understand from his mate that you have not came to her and talked to her and and, and addressed her concerns in regard to the pill and how her man is getting out of jail. And that's the issue that I was dealing with. Okay, well that means you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. I got to say it. You got, well you stood up here and said it. So I'm gonna deal with it here and after it's over with you if you choose. Sister, you had no business going into Al Sharpton's house and raising my name in a negative way and don't know what the hell you're talking about. I should be behind the scenes. If you're not a fool, you understand why I'm behind the scenes. If the judge is black and the judge may be able to do something and Deacons is his personal friend, Khalid Muhammad should move back behind the scenes. You silly as hell. Sit down. Silly as hell. That's silly as hell. How many don't see that that's a wise strategy for me not to be jumping out there in front of the judge profiling so I can be seen? Shh. Hold one second. Hold one second. Hold one second. Hold one second. How many of you understand that if Dinkins has to talk to this black judge, I shouldn't be there. I have never heard Dinkins say one good thing about me. So it's better, sister, the only way to help him is to get to the judge now. He's been convicted. He's been sentenced. Before he was sentenced, we tried to get to the judge. Now we're trying to get to the judge. I shouldn't be involved in that process. I'm the one who got him out to begin with. Had three lawyers for him. I didn't hear you say nothing about that. What do you mean where he is right now? Uh, this is family. Wait, this is, this is family. It's all right for it to go like this. Hell, you can't have a tippy-toe meeting every time. God damn it, if you're that interested in getting him out, you get him out. If you're that interested in getting him out, you do what I did the first time. You go get him a lawyer. I got him three. You get him one. You're not that damn interested in Patrice Peterson. Stop lying. I love you, brother. And I want you to close out for me. I, swear to I can't go. Our sisters and brothers, we had a good time tonight, didn't we? All right? We had a lot of education. We had a lot of... Wait, wait, sisters and brothers. Wait, sisters and brothers. We're going to show our love. We're going to show our love for our guests. Let's have it for Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad. I'm going to ask our brother to close out for us. I think it's fitting. And we're going to ask Dominic Carter to join us from the Witness Protection Program and all those others. Please wait a minute. We're going to have a traditional closing by our brother, Dr. Abdul Khalid Khalid Muhammad. Okay. okay. Um, we're going to bid our ancestors good night. We're going to wish each other safe passage. And let us always remember we are an African people. Stolen from our homeland, robbed of our history, robbed of our language, robbed of our religion, robbed of our entire culture, robbed of our womanhood. 
our manhood, our, our selfhood, self and our self-respect. Self but we're all going to rise, never to fall again. Never fall again. Up, you mighty, beautiful race. Up, mighty, we can accomplish, we can accomplish what, we will. what we will. No justice, no, justice. no, peace. no peace. No justice, no, justice. no, peace. no peace. No justice.